Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us for our Getting Started with Code HS webinar. We are going to wait for a few seconds to um, let everyone get into our room. And we'll get started in just a minute. All right, so I'm going to um, start with some introductions. Uh, my name is Julia Trigo, and I am a PD specialist at Code HS. And I'm here with Portia Morell, who's also a PD specialist. Um, and she's going to be answering any questions you have as we go through our session today. All right, so if you need an account, you can um, hop over to this link, codehs.com slash sign up and you'll be able to get a free teacher account. Make sure that you sign up as a teacher so that you are verified and you are able to um, see solutions and all of the teacher resources that we have available. All right, so we're gonna do a quick um, overview of what we're gonna cover in our very short time together today. We only have about 30 minutes. Um, so we are gonna look quickly, what is Code HS? What do we provide as a company to you? What are your course goals and how can those help you select which course you want to teach on Code HS? So we're going to do a little dive into the course catalog. We are going to look at setting up your courses and sections. How do you get a course set up and how do you have students um, join this course? And then we also are going to look a little bit at customization. That will be right at the end of our session today. So Portia dropped in a link into the chat with our slides for today. So if you would like to have these up um, as we're, we go through our session, that is fine. Um, this, this slide deck is also gonna be sent to you um, along with the recording of today's session um, after our session today. All right, so we're gonna hop right in. What is Code HS? So we are a company who provides um, a comprehensive platform. And we use that word comprehensive because we are gonna give you curriculum for your, um, your different computer science classes. We are going to provide online and offline professional development options for you. And we have a full platform where um, students are gonna write their code and then you are gonna have tools as the teacher to um, grade and, and um, look at the students' um, progress as they go through your course. So our software platform, we say comprehensive because um, you are going to be able to do everything you need to interact with your students on our platform. You're going to um, have students complete and write their code, their programs on our site where they can be auto graded. Um, so that takes a lot off of you in the grading scheme of things. Um, Students are going to be able to instantly um, submit their code. They're getting that feedback from the auto grader, so they're not having to wait for you to provide that. Um, we have a bunch of tracking tools and grading tools so you can make sure your students are where they need to be. And everything is on our website, so you won't need to download any um, software. All right, so that's a little bit about what we provide. Now we're going to dive into the courses that we have. So when you're thinking about what course you should choose and you look at our course catalog, there are an, there's an overwhelming um, number of options that you can choose from. So what are some of the things that you want to think about when you're choosing which kind of course you would like to choose for your students? So we want to think about your course goals. What are the goals that you have and how are these going to fit with the course that you choose? So some um, things to think about. Are you looking for an introductory computer science course or are students um, coming in with some knowledge? Are you looking to focus specifically on computer programming or would you like to include another topic like cybersecurity or web design? Um, do you want students to just get a little taste of a bunch of different computer science topics um, in a type of survey course or would you like them to focus and, and deep um, dive deep into one specific topic? And how difficult do you want those topics to be? How um, advanced do you want students to get as they um, go through your course? So we can also think um, about the timing. How long do you have to teach this course? Are you teaching a full year? 
Are you teaching a semester or are you just trying to find a short unit to add in or supplement to what you're already teaching? Are you looking for coding or non-coding because we have both? Um, do you wanna use blocks or text? So a lot of um, middle schoolers are started out with blocks um, and then transition to text as their typing skills get um, a little more advanced. Um, the difficulty level of your students, as we talked about before, where are they when they're coming into your course? And are there any specific standards that we need to address? So all of these things you can consider when you think about which type of course you want to use with your students. So we're going to first look at our introductory courses, which we have quite a few of. So we have a computing ideas year long middle school course. This is a um, one of our most popular middle school courses, um, a survey course. So students are just going to get a little flavor of a lot of different topics in computer science. And then we have our tech apps and coding course, which is similar, but um, there are notable differences, which makes this course 100% aligned to CSTA 2 standards. So if you um, work in a state where you have adopted the CSTA standards and you need to hit um, CSTA 2, you are able to hit every single standard if you choose to teach this course with your students. Our introductory um, programming courses, we have one in JavaScript, Python, and Java, um, and these are all year-long courses, but there are different options if you have a, a different um, time frame that you need to use. And then we have a bunch of AP options. So if you're teaching AP computer science principles, we have three different options for you. Um, CS in JavaScript, Python, and then we have one with a cybersecurity focus. So um, these are the, the CSP course is um, language agnostic. So you can choose whichever language either you are most comfortable with or you would you think is most um, beneficial for your students to learn. And we also have that review uh, CS principles course as well that you can use at the end of the year. If you're teaching CSA, um, we recommend our Nitro course, which is the blue course at the top. Um, this course is fully aligned to um, the College Board layout of um, material. So um, we introduce objects early on the way that um, College Board has in the um, layout of units. Though we do also offer a MOCA course, which is our other CSA option, um, but this course does not follow that same structure objects are going to be introduced much later in this course. So if you are looking to follow the exact structure of the CSA um, College Board um, units, then Nitro is definitely the one that you would like to, you should choose. Um, and we also have a labs course and a review course for CSA as well. All right, lots of other courses. So if you are looking for web design, we have a bunch of different options. And you'll see here we have um, different time frames, different um, difficulty levels, middle school or high school. And then at the bottom are other courses. We have a bunch of other courses that may just give a, a, a taste of web design. So maybe just one unit or two units of web design included with um, other um, computer science topics. We have a bunch of cybersecurity options. So our fundamentals of cybersecurity course is our intro course. Students can take this with no background. And then once they complete that, they can move on to the advanced cybersecurity course. And we do have um, concept lessons for cybersecurity in both JavaScript and Python that you can pick and choose and throw into our um, introductory JavaScript or Python courses to maybe give your students a little bit of exposure to cybersecurity as they're working through those programming courses. We have two. Um, physical computing courses. So these are going to use devices. Our middle school course uses a micro bit and our high school course uses Arduino. These are only quarter long courses, but they do have some prereqs. Um, so we offer some longer term courses where we integrate the um, prerequisite knowledge, either using Carol and Tracy for micro bit for middle school or our full JavaScript and Python courses for the Arduino for high school. We have a bunch of interdisciplinary courses because we, we know that students um, may already have in their mind something that they're interested in. And 
if you can find a way to link the thing that they're interested in with the thing that you're trying to teach them, you are going to be much more successful in your classroom. So we have a lot of options for you to show students how they can bring coding into the things that they already love. And we have a bunch of new courses, so everything from artificial intelligence, game design, data science. Um, and then we only have this um, data structures course is our only course that uses C++. So um, if you are someone who's teaching C++, this is a really good next um, level for your students. We also have some IB um, computer science courses, as well as um, some mini courses teaching students how to write, um, develop games in Roblox and make digital art with P5JS. On top of all of these courses that we have, we have a wealth of our code options. So these are mini um, lessons that are just going to get students to taste one piece of computer science. Um, and there's a lot of different um, topics so that they are able to choose something that is interested, interesting to them. All right, so how do we find all of these courses? We talked a lot about um, what they are, but how do we get to them? So we do have a direct link, codehs.com slash course slash catalog, or I want to show you how you can get there because if you lose this link or you don't remember it, um, you can get to the course catalog just from our site. So if I'm going to head over to my CodeHS site, and um, this is our main page that we're going to start on. At the top of our main page um, and any page that you're on, this toolbar will stay. So if you click on toolbox, you'll see under resources, we have course catalog. And as you use different um, pieces from the toolbox, they will get thrown into your recent. So you'll see that in my recent is course catalog because I go there often. Um, so you can go to the course catalog from any page, toolbox, course catalog. And once we get there, I'm just going to show you how um, some options that we have for filtering different, um, th filtering through the wealth of uh, courses that we have here. So you can search directly for a course if you're like, I know that she said something about microbit. You can start typing it in and you'll get any of those options with microbit. You are able to filter by grade level. So if you just teach middle school and you want to see just those options, you can filter there. You can tag on either um, programming language, courses that are specific to states, hour of code options, interdisciplinary, Spanish, any new courses, courses that allow for blocks, our popular courses or our AP courses. And I left this last filter um, to talk about last because you can also filter by state. So if you are in a specific state where you know there is a, um, a course that is approved by your state and has specific standards, there are some courses that we have developed that fully align to those standards. So if you're teaching the Foundations of Computer Science course in Delaware, you can come right to here, look for Delaware, and this course you know hits 100% of those standards, as well as that Tech Apps and Coding, Delaware uses the CSTA standard, so they are hitting all of those CSTA 2 standards with our tech apps and coding course for Delaware. That leads me to the last thing that I want to talk about um, on our courses is our state pages. So you can search for um, just what courses are in your state, but we have a lot more information about each state and how computer science is developing there um, at our codehs.com slash states. So if we head there, you'll get to this page with an inter interactive map and if you click on a state, I'm in Virginia, so I'm going to choose there. It will bring you to your state's page, which will give you a lot of good information. It will show you any of the courses that we've developed that are specific to your state. We um, give some, um, some facts, some statistics about your state, um, sample pathways for how you can bring students from 6th through 12th grade in computer science. And then this is a really helpful spot. So even if you are teaching a specific grade or a specific standard framework, and you see that we don't have a 100% aligned course, you can come here and see 
Well, even though there isn't a cybersecurity fundamentals 100% aligned course, there is one that is 92.7%. So very, very close to hitting every single standard. So you can dive into any of these and you'll be able to see which lesson for which course aligns to each standard. And you'll be able to see any of the ones that are missing. So you know what you'll need to fill in to um, hit all of the standards that are missing in that course. So this is a really great um, page to check out if you are um, needing to hit specific standards for your state. All right. Now um, we are gonna, I don't see anything in the chat. So again, if you have any questions throughout our session, throw them in the chat. Portia is there to give you some answers and we can uh, make sure that you get all the information that you came for. All right, so we're gonna hop over to managing our courses and sections. So how do you actually get courses and sections set up and how do you get students to join them? So um, in our slide deck, which again, you will receive um, with your, recording when you get the email after this. Um, we have a lot of different slides that are showing you exactly where to go, exactly how to do everything that I'm showing you. But instead of going through the slides, I'm going to do it on our site. So on your main page, um, you have, it always defaults to your sections. These are like your um, periods, period one, period two. Um, courses is a little different. So if we go to my courses, which you can get to at the top or on the side toolbar, um, you'll see these are all the courses that um, you have created. These are, this is the amount of content, the actual activities that students are completing. Um, and then the sections are your different sections of that. So you'll see for this, I have a course called Arduino and I have one section of students in that course. So I could have this, um, APCSP and JavaScript, I could have this course and I could have it for period one and four and eight. Um, so your course is the, the content and then your sections are the students in them. So how do we create these? Well, you can come to your course page, you can um, create your course right here, or you can also do it from the course catalog. Um, I'm going to show you how to do it on this main courses page. So let's say that I know I want to teach a web design course. So I'm just going to call my course web design. And I'm going to tell you why um, we need to create a name um, in just a minute. So I'm going to put a name web design. That's the course I want to teach. And I'm going to click create new course. It's going to open this um, launch page for me. So either I can choose to use a CodeHS template, which is our highly recommended starting point, or you can start from scratch. If you start from scratch, that means you have to pick and choose and create everything that's going in your course. So it's always um, a good idea to start with a CodeHS course and then customize it as you need, which we're gonna get to in just a minute. So if I choose create, um, you choose a CodeHS course, now I can search. I know that there are a lot of different web design options. I want to use this web design Picasso. And I can, if I don't know which one I want to use, I can um, view that syllabus and pop that out to take a look. So I'm going to choose web design Picasso. And now it is adding that course to my list. And the reason that I had to name my course, I named it web design, right? Here is my course I just made, um, is because you are able to customize any CodeHS course. So if you wanted to create a course that was web design and JavaScript, you could. You could take pieces from web design and pieces from JavaScript and put those together. So the name that you give it is your customized name. Now, you don't have to customize any of it. You can use all of our courses out of the box, but this um, naming system allows you to um, know what the different options are that you have. So this is how we created a course, but you'll see right next to it, it just says I have zero sections. So I don't have any sections for students to join. So in order to do that, I'm gonna scroll over to the options on the right, and I'm gonna choose this um, image that tells me I can create a new section for web design. Once I click that, I'm going to name it. So I'm gonna call this period one web design, and I'm gonna create that section. And now I can, add, I can add a second section if I want. If I Now I also know I have period three web design. I can create that. I can go right to the roster or the assignments. So I'm going to look at the roster for this, um, this 
this course. So I have web design as my course. And this is my period three. Up in the top left, you'll see all of your sections and courses. If I go to web design, I have period one and I have period three. So I am on period three right now and I don't have any students in my course. The way that I would have students join is either send them this link or tell them to go to CodeHS and sign up. And um, when they click join course, it will ask for a class code and that is the you'll notice the last um, five digits of the URL so students are able to join this course using your um, your personalized link or code and then your students will populate in your section. All right now the last thing that we want to talk about um, we only have about nine minutes left it's going so fast um, we are going to talk about how we can customize our courses. So if I go up to assignments, this is going to be for period three web design. These are the assignments the students are actually going to be completing. So if I am on my assignments page, I'm going to see this as a teacher. So I have a lot of options in my teacher view. I can also switch to the student view and see what the student will see. But you'll see all of the content in this course. You can click on any module to expand it to see each lesson in the course and you can expand any lesson to see all of the items in the course, each activity that students are going through. So when they get to this lesson, there's a video, there's a little quiz, an example, and then they're completing some exercises. So this is the main layout of all of our courses. You'll see this um, course has all of these modules included, but I may want to alter this, um, this course a bit to include something of my own or include some content from another CodeHS course. So I have a few options of how to do that. Up at the top, I can add um, a, a blank module lesson or assignment. I can add an existing, um, some existing options. We're gonna focus just on CodeHS course. So if I click add CodeHS course, let's say I wanna add um, a unit from the JavaScript course. So I have all the courses here. I'm going to choose this JavaScript course. And now instead of adding the entire course and then having to pick and choose, I can just choose the parts of this course that I want. So I know that um, I've heard a lot of teachers had a lot of success with Carol. So I'm going to add the program with Carol and the Carol challenges um, modules to my course so that students are going to start with Carol and then they're going to hop into web design. So I'm going to choose I'm going to select these and then I'm going to choose a sign selected at the top. Um, also, just a note, you can assign just lesson by lesson as well if you only wanted, you know, maybe the first five lessons or something. Um, OK, assign that and we'll see that that those modules are going to get added to the bottom of my course. So right now I don't see them, but if I refresh my page they're gonna automatically populate into my web design course specifically for my period three students here. And I'm gonna see, oh, I already had this open before. I'm gonna see at the bottom, I have program with Carol and Carol challenges. But I said, I wanted those to be at the beginning. I want students to start with those. So how can I do that? Well, there's a few ways. I can go over to these um, ellipses over here and I have the option to move up or move down. Now I could do this for my whole course, but that might take a long time. So the other option you have if you're trying to move modules around is to go to the top and choose this edit. And now we can just drag and drop. So I'm gonna take my program with Carol, I'm gonna drag it all the way to, so it's the first lesson, the uh, first unit of my course. And I'm gonna take Carol challenges and I want that to be my second module. So now when I click done, Program with Carol's gonna come first, then Carol challenges, then they're gonna hop into web design. So um, add code HS course is gonna be how you can mix and match different units from two different or three or four different code HS courses in the same um, course for your students to go through. So I have my Carol unit, and then I have a bunch of other content here. Um, one other way that you can add existing code HS content that already we have already created, if you go to the search for content at the bottom, you'll see our supplemental materials. So for our web design course, we have a midterm and we um, have not already included the midterm because we want 
teachers to be able to pl place that where they want it to go. Um, so I can just click assign and that will add any of these um, modules to my course. The last thing that I'm going to cover in our very last uh, bit of time that we have is how can you create your own content? So I showed you how you can mix and match code HS content, but I'm just going to get you started and hopefully this will just get you excited and you'll want to learn more. Um, and we can definitely give you more information about how to customize and add your own material. Um, but there are a few different ways to do that. So let's say in this getting started module, I wanted to add another lesson. I can add a lesson here um, and that will add it straight to my getting started. So maybe I wanna say like, what are your course goals? And now this lesson course goals is gonna get included because remember, I'm gonna have students do Carol and then they're going into the full course of web design. So now I wanna know for web design, what are their goals? If I want to move my course goals to the top, I can use this same ellipses and move them up. So now this lesson is going to be the first thing that my students see, but right now the lesson is empty. So here is where things get really fun. Inside course goals, now my lesson that I created I can add a new assignment. And you can always do this in um, lessons that already exist. But if you just created a lesson, there's not gonna be anything in it until you add your assignment. So once we click add new assignment, we have so many different types of assignments that you can add in. You can add your own quizzes, you can add videos for your students, you can add some notes for them, uh, maybe some different links that they'll need, ask them some free response questions, embed, um, information from another site. You can even write your own coding exercises. So there's a lot of options here. So I don't have any time to dig into that, um, but I do wanna let you know that you can um, customize your courses however you want. You can add your own content and you can mix and match CodeHS content that already exists. So let's head back over here. And I'm going to go all the way to the end here. So all of the content that I just went through is going to be in your slide deck. Um, you will be able to see those um, GIFs and images to get some information there. Um, we wanted to let you know about some other webinars that are happening. We have them all happening throughout this month and into next month. Um, so the next ones coming up are going to be next Wednesday and Thursday. Um, if you're looking, how do I teach an actual lesson in CodeHS? The behind the scenes of a CodeHS lesson is going to be on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Central, and that is going to be a really good place if you are wondering, I know how to get my kids in now, but how do I actually teach a lesson? How do I use the CodeHS content to make my lesson engaging for my students? So that's going to be a great webinar for you to take a look at. And then if you um, want to know more about those state courses and our standards tools, that um, webinar is gonna be on Thursday at 1.30 Central. And you can find the whole list and sign up for all of these webinars at codehs.com slash free PD. Um, there are a lot of different topics and all of these are, are short 30 minute webinars just to get you some information. Again, if the times don't work for you, you can always sign up and you'll receive the information in that email. And if you want to get more information, so if, what I uh, was just talking about, you're like, I just don't even know how to get started. Um, CodeHS.com slash learn more is a great way to connect. You'll be able to um, chat with us and let us know what you're looking for. And we can give you some information about that to make things a little easier for you. All right. So I don't see any questions in the chat. Um, thank you so much for coming. Again, if you have any questions that um, codehs.com slash learn more is a great place to get your answers. And I hope you have a great school year. Thank you, everyone.